So the TSC, remember, it's all four criteria, right? So A, B, C, D. Um, each part has different, or A can be part A, part, part one, part two, part three of your assignment. So if you go through, I'm just going to look at the top levels. Criteria A, knowledge and understanding. Language is used is mostly appropriate and accurate regarding globalization. So looking right here. Um, that would be what you write in your intro, what you write in your um, story of Yokohama, like the history of Yokohama, and what you do in your part four. So thinking about language. Can you just wait and then I'll do all questions. Um, again, student uses vocabulary to demonstrate an understanding of globalization. Are you actually using the phrase, the term globalization correctly? And that's an important one. Um, keep on moving down. Student uses appropriate examples from for, of foreign influence from Yokohama. So that will be your history of Yokohama, your written, your Motomachi map, and your annotated map. This one in particular will be your annotated map. Did you choose appropriate examples? You know, did you not, did it make sense, the ones that you chose to talk about? And then finally, the background of Yokohama is useful in demonstrating the effect of foreign influence on Yokohama. So that's thinking about your history of Yokohama, that like 200, 300 word section. This is, do you know your stuff? Do you understand what globalization is? Do you have an understanding of globalization in Yokohama? Moving down to part B, this is your investigation. Students select a range of information included on the annotated map. So you haven't just done 10 annotations of Motomachi Street, for instance. You've done, you haven't, your examples are actually examples of foreign influence. And you've explained it. Student, student demonstrates effective investigative skills in finding the origin of stores and other appropriate locations. So you've done your best to do research. We call it due diligence. If it's, you know, if you say Starbucks, I don't know, that's ridiculous. If you've said Brooks Brothers, I don't know, you can find that out. There may be one or two that were impossible to find out, but it should probably be the same one for pretty much everybody. And then, so that's looking at your hand-drawn map. And then student fully explains the history of foreign influence in Yokohama in the given word limit. So that's your one on history of Yokohama. So you've done a good job researching. Bless you. Um, Criteria C. Criteria C is always the tricky one. This is always the one that's hardest to do. So looking at criteria C, you show an understanding how Yokohama has developed as a global city. That's probably in the history of Yokohama written part. Student uses examples and links details from all three parts to explain the effect of globalization on Yokohama. Everyone paying attention? Um, so all, in your part four, you have to reference all parts. You can't skip the annotated part because you didn't like it. To get top levels, you have to talk about something from all three. And you should say, looking at my hand drawn, looking at the hand drawn map, it is shown. Looking at the history of Yokohama in part one, you can see. Be really specific. Don't assume that I've read all the other parts. Of course I have, but you're writing part four as if I haven't. Students attempt to explain how Japan has adapted to foreign influence while maintaining a specific Japanese culture. A lot of you over on your first hypothesis have talked about this idea of, yes, it is globalized, but it is still Japan. That should be what you're seeing if you look at your parts one, two, and three. Not every store was a foreign store, for instance. And students show some understanding of the historical role of Yokohama has affected the economy and culture of Yokohama. So you've tried to show me how its history has affected it. What you would do if you include part one in your part four. Criteria D is communicating. Students demonstrate a range of technical skills in creating the sketch map, which accurately represents Motomachi Street. So that's obviously your sketch map. That it's, you've done a good job on that one. Um, and it accurately represents Motomachi Street. 
So if I went to Motomachi Street with that, it would match up. Student includes keys, color, title, symbols. Let me repeat that. Keys, color, title, symbols. Title, some of you are going to forget. That makes the map an effective way of communicating understanding of a foreign influence. Student writing in part one and part four is clear and concise with minimal mistakes. Your, this should be formal writing. This is not a blog post. This is not a conversation. Blogs are usually conversations basically between you and the reader. This is a formal piece of writing. So don't ask me a question. Do you know what globalization is? Yeah, I do. You tell me. What do you think of when you think of Yokohama? I don't know, you tell me. Avoid I statements in your formal writing. I think, just tell me. I know that it's you thinking because you're writing it. Um, also just use formal language. Contractions, for instance, can't, won't, don't. Take those out. Um, try to avoid I statements. Try to avoid you statements if possible. Also, your paragraphs, we talked about this last class, should look like paragraphs. First line indented, the rest of the lines I'm not indented. When you get to the end, you can indent the second paragraph. Paragraphs should be about five to seven sentences each. That's kind of the normal range. That's what a paragraph is. Um, uh, I'm gonna get busted on the video. Um, all writing meets word limits, including the annotations, which are less than 15 words. It's important. That is all four parts. Okay. I'm going to stop this now.